Hey, it's Tucker Carlson. Imagine being a sixth grade boy in the United States right now. What are you hearing at school? What are they telling you on the internet? Well, they're telling you to stop being yourself. Sit still, stop joking, suppress your aggression, share your feelings, obey. Female qualities are virtuous. Masculine qualities are oppressive. That's the message. In case it wasn't clear enough, schools around the country have removed urinals from boys' bathrooms. The male body itself is shameful. Sit down when you pee like a good little girl. Views like this are often called feminism or woke politics, but in fact, they amount to mass conversion therapy, an attempt to change the fundamental nature of people. Nothing like this has ever been attempted at scale. It's one of the most grotesque and destructive experiments in human history. What would it be like to find yourself the subject of that experiment as a boy trying to become a man during the Biden years? Well, you might kill yourself. Many have. You might decide to reject your own manhood and embrace androgyny or even switch sexes. Girls are better? Fine, I'll become one. Or more likely, you might simply withdraw into porn and weed and video games and give up on your life before it's begun. You might retire at 19, a less dramatic form of suicide. All around us, this is happening. Noticing it is forbidden, but that does not make it any less real. So it's probably not surprising that Andrew Tate was the most Googled man in the world last year. He offers a different vision. Tate is a former professional kickboxer who about a decade ago began posting advice to young men on social media. Tate's view is that men want respect above all. It's how they're wired. In order to get respect, men must become worthy of it. They must become more impressive. Wake up early, work as hard as you can, stay sober, find God, keep yourself physically fit, don't complain. That's his worldview. Earlier generations of Western leaders might have found parts of Tate's message inspiring. Now it's seen as a threat. The media treated him like a criminal up until the day he was officially classified as one. Just after Christmas last year, Tate and his brother Tristan were arrested and thrown into prison in Romania, where they live. The Tates were held without charges for three months, very likely with the encouragement of the British and American governments. In June, they were charged with human trafficking. They're now under house arrest until their trial. Are the Tates guilty of human trafficking? We're not their lawyers, but it's worth noting that as of today, not a single woman has come forward to say that she was kidnapped or imprisoned or moved across international borders against her will by Andrew or Tristan Tate. It's also true that in some ways, the charges against the Tates seem inevitable, like they were always going to happen. Accusing a man of a sex crime is the fastest possible way to discredit what he's saying. Days after WikiLeaks revealed that the U.S. government had been spying on its allies and lying about it, Julian Assange was arrested in London for rape. Nine years later, prosecutors dropped the case against Assange for lack of evidence, though somehow that fact was not as widely covered. Is that what's happening here? Again, we don't know. Jeffrey Epstein's dinner partners insist that Andrew Tate is a pervert and a criminal. Maybe they're telling the truth. Either way, we think Tate's views about men very much deserve a hearing. So we flew to Romania to talk to him. We're posting the entire interview here on Twitter because we've been assured it will not be taken down for ideological reasons, as so much of his content has been. The video is long, but if you can, take the time to watch it. Make up your own mind about Andrew Tate. Here it is. So what are you charged with? That's a really good question. I'm charged with being the head of an organized criminal group, which is in charge of recruiting girls to make TikTok videos to steal the money from the TikTok views. Recruiting girls to make TikTok videos and stealing the money. So it's really a financial crime? I, it looks that way. And it's very interesting because the girls who they've identified to add to the file are saying that we're not victims of anything and this isn't true. But the state believes it's true. And the state thinks that I, as a 35 year old man, woke up I was already extremely financially successful. I was already a father. I was already very well known. I had no financial motivation. I have no criminal record. It's not my personality profile, but I woke up at the age of 35 and decided to make girls do TikTok to enrich myself with the pennies that I would earn from TikTok views. So in the United States, 
the I think the belief is that you were charged with human trafficking. Yeah, that's human trafficking because what you do is you force a girl to work against her will for financial gain. That's human trafficking. And their justification for this is that girls do TikTok. Some girls I know who they found who say they're not victims have TikTok accounts. How do you force someone to do TikTok videos? I guess the prosecutor is gonna have to explain that, isn't he? Uh, it's a very interesting scenario I'm in and I'm inside of Romania, so I have to show a degree of respect to the Romanian judicial yes. system. And I have to show a degree of respect to the situation I'm in, but the overall charge is that there's an organized criminal group. There's a group of us. I'm the head of it. My brother is the below me. And we use the lover boy method to convince women to do TikTok videos to make money so that we can steal the TikTok money. So there's no, just to be clear, you are not accused of pandering, of pimping, of no. forcing women to have sex with anybody. No, not forcing them to have sex, not, for, not restraining their uh, movement, not stopping them from living a full life, but the fact that we are somehow convincing them to have TikTok. Very interesting, I don't and, think- but, but, but there's no actual, I'm asking you this because I, I do think it's a widespread belief that you were accused of pimping. Yeah, no, that's nothing to do with any of this case. Absolutely nothing. And it's kind of scary because the crime in itself of human trafficking is a unique one because they can ignore the statement of the victim. So the girls have come forward and said, this is insane. You've just picked us because we're near Andrew and we're his friends. But the whole idea of the crime is they can say that she's under, she's brainwashed, right? She's under duress. So you can ignore her statement. State says she's a victim regardless of the fact that she says she's not a victim. So. It's very interesting because the difference between sex and rape is consent, right? Right. But they remove all of that. They're like, nope, you're a victim. No matter what you say, we're deciding you're a victim. And they've chosen them. And of course, these girls do nothing pornographic. They've never had sex with anyone, nothing to do with that. So they've picked TikTok. So it's scary. Imagine you're a full grown man anywhere in the world today. They can find two girls who have TikTok on their phone, which is every single female on the planet. And they can accuse you of forcing them to take the TikTok money. And even if the girls say they didn't do, that this isn't true, then you're still a, you're still a human trafficker. But, but force, what does that consist of? Forcing someone to do something, are they accusing you of using violence or? No, they're accusing me, and this thing, they're accusing me of using the lover boy method, coercing them by being nice. 